The Littlest Leaguer by Sid Hoff. To Ballfield. All the players in Little League, Harold was the littlest. Maybe you ought to go home and come back next year, said Shirley, the shortstop. Maybe you ought to go home and not come back at all, said Big Leon, who played first base because he had such a long reach. This only made Harold try harder. He tried the infield, but the ground balls did not have to take much of a hop to go over his head. He tried in the outfield, but the other outfielders had longer legs and could move under the fly ball faster. Harold tried to make up for his little for this as a hitter, but there seemed to be no bat light enough for him, and the ball zoomed past him before he could swing. Please don't feel badly, but I'm afraid there's only one place I can put you, said Mr. Lombardo, the coach. He put Harold on the bench. Harold sat there, game after game, wearing out the seat of his pants. Sometimes he took care of the team's bats. Sometimes he brought them cold drinks. I'm tired of being so little, thought Harold, and he stayed out in the rain when the game was stopped, hoping that it would make him grow like flowers. All it did was make him wet. Maybe you ought to try eating green vegetables, said Shirley when the team went home. Better still, try forgetting where we play, said Big Leon. That night, Mr. Lombardo came to Harold's house. He knew his littlest leaguer needed cheering up. You're letting your size bother you. There have been many great baseball players who have not been tall, said the coach, and Harold's father agreed with him. The two men talked about short players who were in Baseball Hall of Flame while Harold listened until he had to go to sleep. So Harold kept sitting on the bench game after game until it was the last game of the season. The winner of this game would be on Little League Champions. The score was nothing to nothing. Harold watched Shirley catch the line drives making great plays at shortstop. But in the top of the third, the score was still nothing to nothing. He watched Big Leon using his long reach to take throws from all over the infield and get runners out on first base. But top of the seventh, the score was still nothing to nothing. Oh, if only I could help them, really help them, thought Harold, as his team came in to take their final turn at bat in the last half of the ninth inning. Move over, said Big Leon, shoving him off the bench. Harold sat on the ground knowing he didn't deserve to sit with the team. He just kept sitting there thinking all of those short players in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Then with two out, the next three batters got infield hits and Harold's team had bases loaded. Ow! cried a voice. It was Big Leon getting ready to bat. He would stepped in a hole and twisted his foot. I can't walk on it. I can't st even stand on it, said Big Leon as they helped him back to the bench. Harold, it's up to you now. We need a hit to win. The bases are loaded and our pitch hitters are sick from too many cold drinks. Will you please go to bat for us, asked Mr. Lombardo. Harold walked to the plate. He stood as tall as possible, hoping to scare the pitcher. But Knuckle Smith was the opposing pitcher. Threw a fastball right across the plate. Strike one, shouted the umpire. Knuckles wound up and pitched again. This time he threw his curve. Strike two, shouted the umpire. On the bench, Harold's team groaned. Some of them got ready to leave. 
It's all over, said Big Leon. Then Harold got an idea. He crouched at the plate as small as possible. He crouched so low and became so small that Knuckles could not find the strike zone. The next pitch came toward the plate, but it was too high. Ball one, shouted the umpire. Knuckles threw again and again, but the pitch was too low. The other was too wide. The count was three balls and two strikes. The next pitch would decide everything. Come on, Harold, shouted Shirley on the bench. Keep your eyes on the ball, shouted Big Leon. Make him put it where you want it, shouted the rest of the team. Mr. Lombardo looked as if he was praying. The ball floated toward the plate. It was Knuckle Smith's slow ball, his change of pace, which always fooled batters. Harold closed his eyes and swung with all his might and pow, he connected. The ball was going, going, gone over the fence for a home run. Harold ran round the bases from first to second, second to third. He crossed home plate and his teammates picked him up and carried him on their shoulders. Harold, you may be the littlest leaguer, but today you were the biggest leaguer of them all, said Mr. Lombardo. And even Big Leon was cheering. Woohoo! Yay for Harold! The end.